Hello and welcome back listeners to the Wedding Photo Hangover podcast. This is Stephen Van Elk. No Dustin here with me today. Guys, I'm super excited. I know you guys have listened to me kind of joke around on the podcast about doing ghost photos, about wanting to take portraits of ghosts for a while now. So I actually went out and I tracked down somebody who does this. So today we're actually going to be joined by Dr. Richard von Finkelstein. He's the first graduate of MIT with a PhD in spectral imaging. Dr. Finkelstein, do I call you Dr. Finkelstein or how should I refer to you? Stephen, thanks for having me on. It's actually Finkelstein oh. is the correct pronunciation. I'm so sorry. It's okay, but thanks for having me on. I love talking about my ghost photos, as some people call them. B but how would you refer to them? I call them spectral imaging, and I use uh, electromagnetic pulse technology. Mm, that's very interesting. So how did you first walk down this path towards spectral imaging? It all started when I was nine years old, and I was taking some photos around my house at night, and I, I thought I saw a ghost. And I went and I got the pictures developed, and you would not believe it but there was nothing in the pictures. There was no ghost. I saw it in real life, but the pictures didn't have any ghost in it. So that led me down a path of studying ghosts, studying photography, and that's where I got my PhD. And I, I studied it and I got my PhD and now I am a ghost photographer and I teach our school's ghost photography class. Do you feel like you were fighting against people your entire life as you were trying to prove out to them the, the things that you believed in? Yes, yeah, Stephen. The, you bring up something very interesting that the fact that not everyone believes in ghosts until you actually see a ghost. So my whole life I was fighting. Ghosts are real. I saw one when I was nine and I would take pictures and then nothing would be in the picture. So I just it just led me down a path of trying to prove that ghosts are real. So I, I I've been taking pictures. Sometimes I go to spooky places like cemeteries and take more pictures. And you know what, Stephen? I see the ghosts in real life, and then I develop the pictures and they're not there. So it leads me to think that the ghosts are real. They're just hiding from my camera somehow. Mm hmm. Hiding from your camera somehow. Um. So. Have you been able to successfully take any photos of ghosts at this point in time in your career? At this point in time in my career, I have not. Every time I develop the pictures, there is no ghost in the picture. On the back of my camera, I see the ghost's face. I develop the picture, nothing. I go to show the back of my camera to someone else, the ghost's face disappears. I can't explain it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any theories as to why this might be happening? I think I'm haunted. I think there's a, a, a spectral haunting me. And for some reason, it's able to change the memory card. I, I, it changes the memory card. It changes the, the data on the disk. I, it's, it's trying to make me look crazy, which, Stephen, I'm not crazy. So are you saying that there might be a ghost actually in, in the computer, in the machine itself? I think you hit the nail on the head right there, Stephen. In, in, in your vast time researching this phenomenon, uh, have you run across any other like-minded people? Yes. Yes. There are a lot of people that take my class. They believe in ghosts. They see ghosts. I feel like people that see ghosts are drawn to me somehow. I, I can't really explain it, but they take my class and I have some, uh, I'm a mentor to some of my students and they are, they're close to producing some, some good work. I can just sense that one of these days, one of them is going to get a picture of a, of a ghost too. I can really feel it. Mm. Your students, do, they, they also, do, do the majority of them also see ghosts or do you ever get the idea that maybe they're taking taking your class just to kind of take the piss out of you, uh, maybe make fun of you a little bit? Yes, you are correct. There are some kids that like to sit in the back of the room and make jokes at my expense, partially because of how I look, partially because of how I talk. But the kids that are in the front of the room are paying attention and answering my questions that I'm asking about these ghosts. And there's a lot of football players that take the course because it's an easy A. And I, it's just a, it's a mix of two different kinds of people that take my class. Mm hmm. So I, I do have a report that uh, from one of your students, um, I, I did a little research ahead of time. And uh, just two days ago, it was said that somebody or something 
shot a spit wad at you while you were teaching and then yelled out, which ghost did that? And um, how did you respond to that? Well, Stephen, I didn't realize at the time that it was a prank. I actually thought that he was saying which ghost did it. I looked around the room. I saw several ghosts in the room with us, and I started to try to figure out which ghost did it. So in in hindsight, I should have thought that it was a student. But uh, in the moment when you start seeing ghosts and you get hit by a spit wad, you think that it is true. You think that it happened. And have ghosts pranked you in the past as well, or is it just All students? All the time. All the time, sometimes I am uh, walking in my house late at night and there's water all over the floor and I slip and fall. Uh, Sometimes a ghost wets my bed for me. Uh, I get pranked all the time by ghosts. So are you in the bed when the bed gets wet? 100% true. 100% true. And uh, when the floor is wet, is that also? Urine as well. Urine as well. Okay. I didn't know if maybe uh, the ghost was leaving out ice cubes and they were slowly melting or something like that. Steven, when I fall, when I'm walking in the house and I slip on something wet and I fall, I sniff my clothes, it's urine. Intriguing. Um, you know, I too suffer from falling and slipping and uh, smelling urine as well at my house. Do you think there's a possibility that I too am experiencing apparitions? Yes, Stephen, 100% so. Anytime something's wet, always sniff it, and that's one of the tall tale signs that you are being haunted by spirit. Urine. Now, you said tall tale. Did you mean telltale? Telltale is exactly what I meant, Stephen. Okay, because I just want to make sure I'm not getting pranked now. You are not. Telltale. Well, that's great to know. So, the other day in the classroom, several ghosts in the class with you. How how many, if you had to put a, a finger on the number of ghosts in the classroom? Four. There's four ghosts. I counted them. Some were from Civil War times. Uh, some were from recent times. And some were from long ago. Lots of ghosts. Mm-hmm. Just taking my class. So if you could, could you describe each one of the four ghosts to us? One by one, let me describe it to you. The first one was a Civil War general. He had his musket with him. He had a pad and paper. He was diligently taking notes. Was the musket an actual musket, or was it more of like a straw that maybe a spitwad could have fit into? Now that I'm thinking about this, I think you're right. I think that could have been the spitwad ghost. Mm. So I think the Civil War may have shot the spitball. Now that I'm recollecting this with you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. uh, the next ghost was a, a a country singer from the 80s. It had a guitar slung on her back, also taking diligent notes. Also taking diligent notes. So the mm-hmm. ghosts are actually attending the class. They want to learn more. Why would they be there if they weren't taking the class? It's an easy A. Do you feel like the ghosts want to have their photos taken? Are the ghosts helping you to try to take their photos? Is that the feeling you get from this? You know what? I've thought about this long and hard, and I do think that the ghosts are a little bit camera shy. I need to maybe warm them up. I need to get them really feeling the sessions, so to speak. And Mm -hmm. uh, I I just think they're a little camera shy. Now, as a professional photographer myself, I feel like I might be able to aid you in this situation. Um, So just kind of, if you could, when you go in for a portrait session with a ghost, um, do you use their first name? No, I do not, Stephen. Mm. No, not at all. Do you smile at them? I, I do not. I, uh, I just keep a, a calm face. Uh, I, I just try to, try to relax, and uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Are you trying to relax yourself, or are you trying to relax the ghost? I'm trying to relax myself. Being in a room with a ghost, it's, it's not what you'd expect. Is it terrifying? At first, but then the hundredth time it happens, it's just a little bit awkward. Yeah. So you walk in, there's a ghost there, you have your camera, you pull the camera up, you see the ghost on the back of the camera as you're shooting in live mode, I assume. You click the shutter, the ghost isn't there. Do you ever have words with the ghost about this? Yes. I ask them and then they just apparate or they disappear. They're, they're gone in front of my eyes. They, they're just camera shy. They're just camera shy. Hmm. What are some ways you think in from your research, that you might be able to break through the camera shyness of the ghosts? Become a ghost. It's the only way I can think. 
If I was a ghost taking pictures of other ghosts, I think they'd be down for that. So when one becomes a ghost, um, oftentimes when we hear stories of ghosts, they're wearing the clothing that they died in. So if you wanted to become a ghost who would shoot other ghosts, would you need to have a camera on you at the time of your death? It's a very good question. And the answer is yes, you would. When you're a ghost, you can't touch anything, or can you? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know the well, answer. I mean, that. a ghost did shoot a spitwad at you the other day. You know what? Just, just to be safe, I am going to die with a camera around my neck just to make sure I have that in the afterlife. And which camera would you choose to die with if you had to die today? I shoot Sony, Stephen. You shoot Sony. Hmm. Do you think that maybe the mirrorless aspect of the Sony cameras is maybe preventing you from mm. being able to capture the ghost? Uh, a lot of people report seeing ghosts when they look in the mirror. Ah, what's that behind me? Oh, it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. um, do ghosts prefer mirrors? They may. I think vampires are the ones you can't see in a mirror. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's some type of uh, paranormal mirror ghost uh, syndrome that's going on that's that's inhibiting me from from making my breakthrough. But that's worth a try. So you, maybe I'll shoot on Canon the next time. I don't know. Now, your rival, Dr. Nigel Farbottom from Harvard University, has successfully shot several ghosts. Um how does that make you feel, knowing that he's having so much success while you're still struggling? Makes my blood boil. He was in the last issue of National Geographic, and I cursed the magazine that he was in. It, it upsets me. I'm angry. My life work is to shoot a ghost, and I'm just upset. And if I ever see him in real life, I am going to tell him what I think of him. And what you think of him is? He's a son of a bitch. Couldn't agree more. You know, I don't think enough people are talking about the horrors that Dr. Nigel Fairbottom is putting these ghosts through. We really need to open a dialogue about the ethical treatment of ghosts, in my opinion. Dr. Nigel Fairbottom, for listeners out there who might not know, um, engages in a certain sort of catch and release system with the ghosts. He's actually trapping the ghost so that he can take photos of him. He's not obtaining their consent. When you see one of his photos with a ghost in it, you know that is a ghost who didn't want their photo taken. Um, have you ever considered engaging in any of the more dubious methods of uh, capturing photos of ghosts? I don't. And you know what I do? Every time I'm trying to take photos of ghosts, I have a consent form with me. So mm -hmm. that if they do happen to want to be photographed by me, they can sign a release and then I will be free to use their, their photographs for my work. So I am actually very upset with my rival and I think it's the wrong way to go about ghost photography. So after you get done calling Dr. Nigel Fairbottom a son of a bitch, which I agree 100% he deserves it. What else do you think you would say to him to try to educate him on the ethical treatment of the spectral specters? Well, you know what I would tell him? I would tell him to take my class because that is one week's worth of material. It's talking about the ethical treatment of ghosts. So how do you, when you're shooting the ghosts, do you obtain the consent before or after the photo? So beforehand, I hold out the release form and I say, if you're interested to sign this release form, you may. And if you don't, I take that as that you are agreeing to be in this photograph. If you stick around and let me photograph you, they disappear, then they obviously don't want the picture taken. Mm. But it, So you think that maybe, maybe the, the sheer act of asking if they want to be in the photo is tipping them off to the fact that there's a photo being taken and that's why they I choose to disappear. If I was more dubious and I didn't care about getting a release form from the ghost, then maybe I would have more ghost pictures to this day. Point blank, Stephen. Wow. This has been quite the illuminating interview. Um, is there anything else you'd want to say just to the public out there? Just anybody listening at home, any boys and girls thinking about getting into the spectral imaging field when they grow up? Yes, Stephen. 70% of Americans think that ghosts do not exist. That is 100% wrong. It should be 100% of Americans think that ghosts do exist. Let me ask you this, Stephen. Anytime you're up late at night, you think you hear something, you think you see something, it's a ghost. Whether you look down and your pants are wet, your bed is wet, it's a ghost. One time, 
I was up late at night. I thought I heard something. I looked down. My pants were wet. The chair underneath me was wet. I walked down the stairs. All of the stairs were wet as well. All of it smelled like urine. And I could have sworn, minutes before I started walking down the stairs, those stairs were completely dry. Stephen, you have been haunted. I feel haunted every day. Thank you so much for shining a light on what's been haunting me. Before we go real quick, um, you do have a book out right now. Um, if you want to take a second to just plug your book, uh, so everybody at home can uh, rush out to, uh, I don't believe it's on Amazon. Uh, where is it being carried? So there's a few more borders left that haven't shut down yet. It's being carried by all borders. And there is a Barnes & Noble in Rhode Island that's carrying my book. Please go out and buy it. The title of the book is I Just Saw a Ghost and Peed My Pants and Took His Picture by Dr. Richard Von Finkelstein. That is tremendous. And for those listeners out there who may be departed as well, um, just know that you don't have to go to a Borders that is still in existence. If you can find the hollowed out shell of a husk of a Borders or a Barnes & Noble in a city like, I don't know, Detroit or Pittsburgh, um, those usually are carrying it in its spectral form. Also, if you want another, if you want a, just a digital copy of my book, uh, take an e-reader or a tablet into the bathroom, turn out the lights, and say my name three times, and it appears on your tablet. And that name was again? Dr. Richard Von Finkelstein. I think we need it two more times, though. Oh, I don't want my book to appear right now. Thank you so much for Skyping with me while in the bathroom with the lights off. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. What a lovely interview with Dr. Richard Von Finkelstein. I'll be back in a second with Dustin to do a little Q&A. But first, a word from our sponsors. Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve. Dustin, no episode of Wedding Photo Hangover would be complete anymore if we didn't answer some weird questions. So Dustin, this for our Halloween episode. We got some weird questions. You ready for this, buddy? Oh, yeah, I'm ready for it, man. Clemen from a random Facebook group writes in and he says, I got kicked out of, mu of a museum for taking a flash photo of a mummy. It's a good photo. Why I get kicked for taking photo? Clemen, maybe you need to learn how to speak English before going into museum. Dustin, that's not fair. Lots of people go into museums. That's true. That's pretty harsh of me. From all over the world. We don't even know. Cle Clemen could be in English as a second, third, fourth language. Maybe he's a world traveler. Maybe he's the famous Clement Clement, traveler of all the worlds. Well, he's been I, to Mars and J Jupiter and Uranus. Clement. And he's coming back to Uranus very soon. Clement, I have to assume that you perhaps haven't studied mummyology like Stephen and I. Um, mm -hmm. It's a classic class we take when you're studying to be a professional photographer or videographer. Um, and in mummyology, Clement, it's... You don't ever flash a mummy, whether it be camera, boobies, booties, whatever. You don't flash unless it's one of those pro photo flashes, in which case I think then it's okay. But, um, oh, it's, you said it, you can't flash with the camera. You mm -hmm. can't flash with boobies. Can't flash with booties. Mm -hmm. Are you saying dong is in for the flashing? Oh, for sure. Does a mummy like a good dong? Definitely. Mm. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. But you got to wrap it. <laughs> uh, oh, Dustin. <laughs> what else do they teach you in your mummyology classes? <laughs> well, obviously to wrap it. But, um, but yeah. Because uh, if, Clement, God forbid, you were to flash said mummy um, with you know, a standard f camera flash, that mummy would then have your soul. You would become the mummy. And then the mummy would be walking around the museum as you, Clement. Is that really what you want? That sounds pretty dope, man. <laughs> then, next time somebody flashes you and you're the mummy, now you transfer into their body. Now you have to go find your former body self, hunt yourself down, and shake it and say, Give me my soul back, mummy! And then your mom is like, why are you shaking me? I'm your mommy, not your mummy. <laughs> really? That's where you're going to take this to a mommy joke? 
<laughs> That's all I had. That's all, all you had. had. Well, Dustin, thankfully, Dresh from a random Facebook group says, I dress my kid up like a zombie to do some of those zombie baby photos that are so cool. Yeah, are they? After the photos, I fell asleep and had a nightmare. I was fighting zombies, just like usual. I woke up because my kid bit me. Now I feel sick. Also, I really want to bite someone. Is it possible that because I believed he was a zombie, that when he bit me... I became a zombie. Like a curse for making him take these photos or something. Yes. Yeah, much like with mummies, um, when you take photos of a zombie or even just somebody dressed up as a zombie, if you really believe in the zombie in your heart, um, the image of the zombie does get recorded into the camera and then is transferred into the closest soul nearby thus infecting you more than likely the the photo taker who's holding the camera Uh, a good way to avoid this sort of thing in the future would be to use a wireless remote so you get a little distance from the camera what a lot of people don't seem to know is mummies are basically just zombies that have been wrapped up which is why so many of the same (laughs) rules apply to both of them uh yes you have to use the pro photo lighting system um, you can go to ProPhoto.com, use the promo code Halloween Wedding Hangover, and uh, you won't get anything off, but it's always worth a try. And um, that should work for all your zombie mummy related flashing needs. Mm-hmm. What a lot of people don't know is that zombies and mummies have feelings. And, you know, if you're going to flash them with your photography without their consent, like, you're doing damage to them. And mm-hmm. you're really taking advantage of them. And we, we want to treat our horror beings um, with the kind of respect that they deserve. Mm-hmm. They've been alive a long time. They've been dead a long time. And they've acquired a certain amount of respect and decency um, that, you know, we should really be giving to just everyone that we come in contact with, but especially those who have died before us. And if, they, if you feel that they won't sign a consent form, you know, go look for their mummy. If they're too young. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. legal guardian. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Emily from a random Facebook group says, good morning. I have a client that has requested a Halloween themed baby shoot with her daughter. She is turning one. She wants to put her in a bucket of fake blood and have her splash around. No, I am not totally against this, but I've seen photographers getting negative feedback from doing this. What are your thoughts on this? Should I do it or just go with her backup plan of putting her kid inside a lame pumpkin? Why not combine the two? Put her in the pumpkin and then fill the pumpkin with blood. Yeah, and I'm right there with Dustin. I think the reason these people have been getting negative feedback is because everybody looks at them and says... What were you, chicken? Were you yellow-bellied? Why didn't you use real blood? In America, we like things real. We want real blood on these babies. When you use fake blood, people can tell it's fake blood. It doesn't congeal right. You know, when you're doing these baby photos, you really need that look like the blood is starting to congeal. And I should probably be turned into CPS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you gotta pull them out before it fully congeals, because then you would get in trouble. So many things wrong with all of these statements. I um, don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. All I know, Emily, is if you're doing baby photos and your client wants to dip their one year old baby into a pool of blood, fake or otherwise, I think it's conversation that you might need to go a little deeper with them. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe what they're really trying to do, they're trying to, uh, you know, get their baby super strong. Maybe it's not a pool of blood to them. Maybe it's the river sticks. Maybe they're trying to Achilles their baby. Achilles their baby. Really? Yeah. Did you ever think about that, Dustin? Maybe they want a strong baby, a powerful baby, a baby that can't be wounded anywhere except on their heel. Mm. Who are you to take that away from their baby? 
uh, somebody who doesn't want my child to ever look back at their childhood photos and see them in a pool of blood and think, oh, did I have a sibling? Did I have a twin? A twin that didn't make it? The twin was your p- the pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> your mother was really into pumpkin pie when she was pregnant with you and out popped you and the pumpkin. Pumpkin didn't make it. We couldn't allow the pumpkin baby to live. Why do you think we had to scoop its guts out and put you inside of it? (laughs) No, you are the pumpkin. You live for the pumpkin. (laughs) Why do you think every time somebody calls you pumpkin, we say, no, this one's not the pumpkin? (laughs) Don't let pumpkin's death be in vain. (laughs) I think that's going to do it for us this special holiday. Halloween, the most hallowed of holidays. Mm. Uh, Dustin, thank you for joining me for this special episode. Uh, We'll be back this Sunday with a brand new non-holiday themed special episode. Mm. Not special, just a normal episode. Is that what we're calling those? Equally as spooktastic? I don't think so. Could anything live up to how spooktastic this has been? Mm. Will it be mummificational? Everything we do here on The Wedding Photo Hangover is mummificational. We live up to all of the International Dead Casting Society's uh, rules and regulations here mm-hmm. at The Wedding Photo Hangover. We're certified, hangover. right? We're certified. Yeah. This is a certified dead cast. Class 106? Yes. Class 106. Uh, we're also a class 105, a class 104, a class 103, 107. <laughs> a class 102, and a class 101. Um, yeah. The next step in our dead cast certification would be to go 107. We have not got there yet. We can then 107, fly it, dead. It allows you to fly bats. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That are over 250 grams. Yep. So uh, right if you want to jump for us. on over to the Patreon where you can support us as we pursue our 107 bat flying uh, degree. Degree. Certification. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Have a great night. Have fun trick-or-treating, everyone. Boo. Boo to you. Boo to you. <laughs> Roof. That, that was my werewolf. All right, dude. It is late. I need to go to bed. Have a great night, Dustin. We'd like to give a big thanks to Kerry Casile from the I Don't Give an F Stop podcast for all of his help with this episode. Urine as well. This episode was edited by Bespooktone.